Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us again. This is the Office of Lifelong Formation um, virtual training uh, at tips for creating presentations uh, while you're doing virtual ministry, which is something that we've all had to become quite familiar with if we weren't already uh, in the past few months. Um, we're gonna start with prayer and we're gonna keep in mind all those prayer intentions that we saw in the chat. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you've given us these skills and ability to create technology. We have used it often to spread the good news of salvation and God's plan for those who believe. Please help us continue to evangelize in this way using the gifts you have given us for good. Through technology, we have an easily accessible way to communicate with one another. Let us continue to witness, not only with our words, with the work we do in your name. May we always embrace our responsibility in this life to serve you and those we come into contact with every day as we seek to use technology to further the work of the Lord. May we use technology and our time wisely as a means to communicate your message of love to the world. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So for our presentation, for our training today, we are joined by members of the Office of Lifelong Formation, as well as some catechetical leaders that are gonna be helping us. Uh, so we have uh, Deb Brakey, who's the Senior Coordinator of Children and Family Ministry at uh, Office of Lifelong Formation. Kenneth Velsquez, who's the Senior Coordinator of Certification and Ongoing Formation at OLF, and Jackie Herrera, who is the Production Coordinator and of certification and ongoing formation at OLF as well. And then our catechetical leaders we have joining us today, uh, we have Carrot Shiflet, who is the Director of Religious Education at St. Joseph Parish in Homewood, and Janet Cachetta, uh, who is the Director of Youth Catechesis at St. John of the Cross um, Parish in Western Springs. And then later, he's not on here quite yet, but we'll have uh, Hector uh, Obergon, who is the Director of Religious Education and Youth Ministry at St. Viator Parish in Chicago joining us. Uh, so today we're gonna start with going through some basics um, and just give you some examples of effective slides there. Then we'll walk through how to reuse slides, the helpful feature, um, and then go over some best practice about moving through presentations. So all of those will have some presentation by the OLF staff, and then we'll have some examples from the catechetical leaders. Um, at the end, we will have a breakout room, or maybe we'll stay in one room depending on our size and just share some ideas all together. Uh, and then we'll have some resources to share with you, opportunity for you to ask any questions and get some answers to those. If you have a question that comes up um, during the presentation, feel free to put it in the chat and we will make sure we get to it during that question and answer session. And then we'll end with prayer. So that'll be our training for today. So Deb is gonna take over right here. Great, good morning, everyone. Um, so as we all know, you know, our current reality has kind of pushed us into virtual classes, virtual parent meetings, recording lessons or doing at-home lessons you know, and they've been a challenge for many of us. I would suspect many of you have become expert in various ways in those areas. So, um, you know, we've learned a lot in the last few months. Um, but we also are aware that PowerPoint can help us when we're doing these presentations. So um, with the current reality, you know, now we have an opportunity to reach students, parents in, in new ways. So, um, you know, and I said, as I said, PowerPoint can help us there. So um, this can help you create clear lessons that are helpful for visual learners. Um, the inclusion of music, video, and images can you know, then create more engaging lessons for your students as well. So we're gonna go through you know, some, some basic tips and then you know, some more um, practical tips as well on how to create your PowerPoints for your presentations. So then our next slide. Kenneth, can you switch this? There we go. Okay. So with our virtual presentations, two main things we need to ask ourselves. What are, what's our purpose and who's your audience? So with our purpose, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to kind of get caught up in just 
creating this presentation and, and just presenting information. But at the heart of what we do is catechesis. So we wanna you know, be mindful that we are teaching and we have an overall lesson objective and outcome that we want when we create presentations. So um, to just you know, be mindful of those. And oftentimes, you know, as we showed at the beginning an agenda for our training today, you might wanna just show your, your main objectives when you are preparing your PowerPoint. You might wanna start with those and just you know, share those. Um, and then also throughout your lessons, you know, there's always a story that you're trying to tell. And PowerPoint can help you to just kind of um, share that story with people and make sure you're, um, you know, getting the, the message across in more than just words. You know, so PowerPoint can help you with images and videos to help you tell your story to your students and engage them more. Um, and then also, who is your audience? So in our presentation, we'll kind of keep coming back to this today, that, you know, that we need to be mindful that are we teaching and creating presentations for children, for teens, for adults, or families. So they're going to look differently depending on your audience. Um, and then also to be mindful of what do they already know and what don't they know. So that will help frame the content that will be in your presentations. So um, before, oh, I think Kenneth, were you going to talk about this part? Yep. Uh, yes. So, um, so you, we, we all, I think most of us are familiar with uh, PowerPoint. It's some, uh, one of the tools and resources that we've been using for a while in different formats and different ways. Um, please know that the, by having and using your Arch email, uh, that's a presentation we also um, offered and, and we have the recording if uh, if you miss that presentation. We all Arch employees, part-time or full-time, we have an Arch, Chicago.org email. With that email, you have access to Microsoft suit that we have. We have Teams, we have um, PowerPoint, Office, Excel, and, and other um, apps that Microsoft is offering right now in, in the whole package you have access to that and PowerPoint is one of them. So even your catechist may have access to PowerPoint through the Arch email if you request for your catechist to have an Arch email. Uh, with that being said, you have access to PowerPoint as a cloud um, version of the, of the program. You, if you want to download it in your computer and have it all the time without having internet access, you can do it, but I think there's a cost associated with that. But that's something that might be presented in the in the other uh, training that we did about the Arch email. But now going to the point of PowerPoint, how this is helpful. PowerPoint, as you can see, have different formats, have different themes, different ways of doing presentation. This is meaning, you know, improving a lot. And Microsoft knows that they need to continue improving because virtual uh, presentations are now kind of the most needed tool that we will be using or, or going to. But one thing that I, I really like about PowerPoint is it's extremely friendly. Yeah, and, and, and you, even not knowing uh, much about technology, you are gonna be able to do presentations. Now, presentations are helpful in different ways as um, Deb was mentioning, but most important is how you want to enhance or make it more appealing, more you know, colorful. And we're gonna be talking about that, but PowerPoint has a lot of tools that you can use. Um, among other, other programs that you have accessible. But one of the points is templates and themes can be really um, colorful with um, uh, PowerPoint uh, as a program. Now we have also Google Slides. Uh, for Google Slides, let me just uh, switch my, um, my, my screen. And I'm going to I'm gonna share Google. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now you see my screen with Google. Are you able to see that? So Google, I just go to Google, the, 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 the search engine and go Google Slides. And it will take me, of course I, I need um, a Google account for that, but it's totally free. And that's one of the things that I, I really like about uh, Google Slides that is free. Uh, the version is always online, it's over the cloud, it's over the web, 
and you can share you can have two three people working in the same document at the same time literally at the same time and you can see who is in the you know link to to that slide at the, at the time so you can have a lot of collaboration now it doesn't have all the tools as a powerpoint but you have a lot of good resources that you can use here and you know and and it has the same format it has the same way. It looks exactly the same. If you're open in a computer, you're open in a tablet, you're open in a, in a, on a phone. So it's extremely flexible. Now, some of the tools that you can see here, some of them are not like the reusing um, um, slides or other templates. Are it's a little bit limited, but like in everything in technology, when you when you when you get mobility and flexibility, sometimes you lose other uh, points that that you also find might be useful. So that's something that I really I really like about um, uh, Google Slides. Now I'm going to pass now to Hector, I believe. You can see now the presentation again. Hector is going to talk about Keynote, a program that I haven't used, but I think Hector can help us right now with Keynote. Yes. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, so like PowerPoint or Google Slides, then there is also Keynote. And Keynote is a fantastic tool you know, to use when doing uh, presentations. Uh, probably the difference between them is that uh, certain tools that is not in PowerPoint uh, has Keynote. I will kind of just share very quick, you know, uh, what you can do with Keynote. Uh, let me let me switch my. Uh, you can see that, right? Uh, so what what I am showing you now is a Keynote. Uh, uh, it was a presentation done in Keynote, and uh, <clears throat> what you what you normally do with this is that you bring you you can you can bring GIF, for instance. Uh, and with that movement, you know, to your presentations, you want to, like I was doing this presentation for a confirmation rehearsal, uh, virtual. So I was telling them, you know, uh, what, um, what to do before coming. So I was showing this little uh, picture, you know, for his movement, so then they can see what are we talking about. Uh, we were talking about wearing masks, you know, <clears throat> I was uh, telling them that. And uh, I was kind of also like uh, how we feel about having them. So as you can see, uh, th those are kind of little things that probably uh, you might have um, some difficulty with uh, PowerPoint, but Keynote makes kind of a bit more easier. Okay. I have seen I have seen that some people now have begun using Keynote also. Sorry, uh, GIF also in PowerPoint, and it's working well. No, Hector, <clears throat> uh, I think you're showing the presentation on PowerPoint. Oh, is it? Yes. No, uh, you, are you seeing before coming to confirmation? No, child development. Okay, let me see. One second. I, I'm talking about something else then, right? <clears throat> My bad. <clears throat> okay, now. Can, okay, so I will, I will just go quick about what I was saying. So uh, this is what you can do with Keynote, right? Just uh, once again you know your audience. So this, this presentation was done for a confirmation rehearsal for uh, confirmandi, for parents and sponsors. And I wanted them kind of to uh, not just see a frozen screen, but to see some movement there. Uh, and also, you know, get my point across, you know. Uh, I can go just very quick. Uh, that's what Keynote does. You can see it kind of opening like a door and then bringing the screen. You know, I was gonna tell them about uh, what, how important it is to keep your distance. So this little guy, you know, is walking and then I can tell them, for instance, you know, keep your distance. <clears throat> so those two little guys are GIF, but the six feet uh, kind of, I can get a picture from somewhere else. I can take away the background and put the text and then I can make it kind of neat. You know, the same thing with this one. Uh, you, you see this person, you know, uh, they're kind of uh, welcoming everybody um, and I am talking. So there's something going on in my screen. So people are kind of listening to me, but also uh, seeing what's going on in the screen. Uh, also what um, 
what you can do is, again, you bring movement, but also you want to tell people, you know, where uh, sitting the candidate and uh, who are the parents, you know, and, uh, and so you're giving them directions. Uh, as you can see, I am bringing just uh, uh, with this uh, one picture, but in fact, that's a group of pictures that with, with Keynote, I was able to remove the background from every, for, for everyone else and uh, uh, just stay with one picture. So with that, you know, I want to accomplish uh, with them uh, how they come, how they sit and where they are. So then it's not, again, like a frozen thing, but they are kind of seeing how they can prepare before coming. So this is kind of keynote. Uh, I, I think I, I, that's all what I can say for now um, compared to what might be uh, PowerPoint, okay? Thank you, Hector. And I think that's also uh, something to um, kind of uh, complement what we were saying is that um, we have uh, different programs based on what you have available in your, in your um, um, accessible to you in your budget. So if you have a Mac, you can use Keynote. Uh, you also have PowerPoint for, for Mac that you can download. You have Google Slides if you don't have a budget or you want to have more flexibility, or you can use uh, PowerPoint for Microsoft if you are using your iChemo. So there are different, um, different things that you can use at this time um so it's not only one tool now i think i'm going back to that with the next slide yep so i'm going to screen share real quick and just show you know some very basics on how to start your slides um so we'll go through that super quick um with all of these you know whether you're using powerpoint google or keynote they're all so user friendly so it's you know it's very easy so when you come into a new a new slide in PowerPoint, you can see like you already have many templates that you can use that have themes with them. So you could easily choose one of those and just kind of plug in. Um, if there's already images in there, you can delete those and put your own images in. It has everything, you know, kind of already set up for you. If you go to a blank presentation, um, we'll see how long this takes to pull up now that we're all sharing. <laughs> um, okay, so there we go, okay. So if you click on design, you can see up here in the top bar, you already have, you know, very simple designs as well. So, you know, here's just a very standard basic design. You can change the colors, you know, and, you know, do things like that. Um, again, it's so user friendly that if you wanted to add a new slide, there's just a tab to do that. And then you have different formats of the slides. If you wanted, you know, to compare two things, it's going to give you a template where you just then plug things in for that. Um, if you wanted to duplicate a, duplicate a slide, you would just right click on the slide and you can duplicate it. So then you're having that same format coming up, you know, on the two different slides. Um, and you can also click on a slide and go to the layout if you wanted to change the layout of it, you know, so, um, this is just a very standard design. So you can see if I click down another one, you know, then this is what your title slide is going to look like. And this is what, you know, your other slides may look a little different then. Here would be the template for a picture with caption. So though that's just really the very quick how to use PowerPoint, but just like if you're comfortable with Word, this is so user friendly. You have all your tabs up at the top to help you through things. And we'll talk about it a little more as we continue going through. Okay, Kenneth, you can screen share again. Okay, so. So the next area we're gonna talk about is design. So just to kind of get your feedback and maybe you know have a little conversation here um, regarding design, would you think this slide would be more appropriate for first through eighth grade, confirmation, parents, catechists, or none of the above? Like, where would you think that this slide would be, um, you know, appropriate to use? If anybody just wants to kind of shout out or throw your opinion in the chat, either way. And then after that, we're going to talk about specifics of design. I think it would be interesting to have them the answers in the chat to see kind of percentage to see data. Okay. 
So does anyone have any opinions? Where would you use this slide? If you would, would you say none, you know? Um, we have one, personally, E, none. I prefer heavy text only for prayer. Okay, and that, yeah, we, we had a very text heavy slide for our opening prayer, but it was appropriate there. So that's a good point. Um, none because it's too wordy. D, maybe just for catechists. None. I agree, too much text. Kenneth, people don't like your slide. <laughs> and I was worried that they would like it. So that I think that was a point. Um, okay. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Very good. Okay, so then we'll go to the next slide. And as you can see, so here's kind of our five quick tips that we're going to talk about. So uncluttered. And I think you all, you know, recognize that, that, you know, if it's too much information, it's not going to get across very well. So just to be mindful of what's on your slide and keep it clean and uncluttered. Um, with the six by six rule, oh, here we go. Great example. So again, here's a very cluttered slide. And then the next one as well is, is very cluttered. Although this one tried to use different colors to set things apart, you know, it's still too, too many words, too text heavy. So with the six by six rule, um, you want to have you know, six bullet points a page and one thought per line with approximately six words. So that's going to help you just really get to the main point and not be too wordy on the various things that you're you know, speaking to with the six by six rule. Um, if you can maybe just go back to that first slide with the tips on it, we just covered the first two there. We've talked a bit about text, but aside from the, the amount of text that you have in your slides, you wanna make sure that you have consistency also, you know, so that your um, font is similar throughout. There's not too many fonts on one slide, you know, to make it look too busy. Um, font size is important to make sure that people can actually read. What's on your text? You know, like you saw with the ones that were very wordy, it's hard to see all of that because it has to be so much smaller. So the text size is important. Um, and then also it's good with text to sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, highlight or bold certain keywords or phrases on your slide that'll draw the attention to those areas. Um, so that's a good practice as well. And then <clears throat> with color, um, you saw when I showed you just really quick how you can open up a new slide and the different themes. With those, there was consistency in color from one slide to the next so that you're not, you know, hopping around to too many colors and making it too busy in that way. So it's just important to, um, you know, be mindful of your color scheme as well. And then the design ideas tool this is found in PowerPoint and it can help you, um, you know, kind of create a more visually appealing slide. So that's a tool within PowerPoint that can, you can put a slide with a little bit of information there and it will help you design it to make it more appealing. So um, Deb, while we're yeah. on this slide still, we have someone asking, will you repeat what the six by six rule is? Sure. Six by six rule is six bullet points per slide, one thought per bullet point, and trying to keep that thought within six words. So you have the six bullet points and six words per line to really just kind of simplify. Yes, and just to add that, I, I think what the, the rule, um, the rule is, is appealing is to have no more than six bullet points and you can add the images and you know and you can mm -hmm. use the different resources not only uh, text but if you're putting a text because you want to put a convey an idea is just mm -hmm. to use hopefully no more than six words so you mm -hmm. need to be really concise really precise really strategic in what word you're using in that in each bullet point so you know you're going just right there to to the meat and not necessarily to put a whole text that maybe just you know making our eyes um Right. A little bit Kenneth, all over the place. So I'm going to I'm going to screen share real quick to just show mm -hmm. people where the design ideas, yes. how that pops up in PowerPoint. So um, 
There we go. Okay, so you can see here, I couldn't see it before because my the people that are in the meeting were covering my design ideas slide. <laughs> so when you have a slide up on the right, sometimes automatically you will get design ideas that pop up in the right tab, you know, sidebar. So there are a variety of, of um, you know, options there that you could choose to then make your slide even more decorative. Um, that is also, you can find that in the design tab up in the top, all the way over at the right. So if it doesn't pop up automatically, that option comes up in the toolbar. Okay, so back to our slide deck, there we go. And so now we're gonna turn to our catechetical leaders that are joining us um, that have agreed to share some best practices um, and ideas on slide design. So I think we're gonna go to Karen first. Morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be with you. So this uh, slide is showing, uh, it's a, a presentation that I created for my parent orientation to kick off the start of this religious education year. And um, I wanted to provide them with ways of remaining engaged despite all of the different challenges that we're all contending with. However, I didn't want to give them a, a lengthy list. Um, at the time I created the slide, I, I was not aware of the six by six rule. So it's really helpful to now have that in my back pocket. Um, I had a list of eight things I wanted parents to be mindful of. Um, so I decided to make uh, the visual in this format. Uh, just like Deb said, I usually uh, rely heavily on the design ideas. And so while I was creating the slide, I was typing a list, but looking at all the different options the design ideas were providing. So I went ahead and clicked on this option. Uh, and the only real change I made was with the design ideas, each box was given a, a different color, but I wanted a very clean look. Uh, and so I changed the color to keep everything consistent. But other than that, it was just relying on the uh, tools that PowerPoint provided. So I was able to create this visual. Uh, and I'm also trying to make sure that the language began with uh, active verbs. So I wanted to tell parents, you know, attend mass, take uh, class, be available, communicate, those kinds of things. Um, with Every bullet point, I wasn't as concise as I wanted to be. Um, I think it's helpful when there's, you know, two or three words in each box. It makes taking the information in easier. Um, so I think a little bit of, I, I could have done better with the be available during children's classes. Um, but this is just one way I try to give parents a lot of information without making it look uh, overwhelming. And I'll pass it on to Janet. Thank you, Karen. Um, at St. John of the Cross, we always do in-person meetings for candidates and their parent. And of course, this year, like all of us, we couldn't have in-person meetings. So we took our PowerPoint slide and made it into a show. And this is one example of that slide where we talk about year one confirmation. So our point is to use, I like to obviously use a color. Um, I've got a JPEG on there that talks about their 100% commitment that I don't say in the presentation, but it's a visual for them to know that we want their candidate to be committed to the confirmation preparation, which is obviously a two-year process. And so we, this slide actually takes about a seven minute conversation because we go into detail on service and what they do in their small group communities um, at, in the school and in the religious ed program and all of these bullet points. Um, we go into detail on who they can choose as their saint name and who they can choose as their sponsor also. Um, so our point was to keep it concise and do the um, presentation from the knowledge that we had rather than getting it text heavy. So I use different hearts for bullet points instead of just dots uh, and tried to use color 
so it would be more appealing for them. And then if you want to jump, I think the next one is also mine. Uh, this one is actually done, the first one was done in PowerPoint because it had been done um, for several years and fine-tuned each year. This one is one we created for lessons, and this is Google Slide. So um, it's on our website, and it talks about the um, tour of the mass and what are the things that they could see in mass. What we found uh, important and I think vital to parents, too, is we use don't use stock pictures, we use pictures of our church. So we went through the church and took pictures of what we wanted to talk about. We also use um, bold on the points that we want to jump out at them. Uh, so that's just another example of using um, images and picture, whether they're pictures or JPEGs or GIFs. Um, there's lots of different ways to communicate to parents when, as what you want to do. And both of these were made into shows, which we'll go over in a little bit, which Deb will go over in a little bit on how to create it. So they don't have to click anything, it just plays for them. Great, thanks. Um, okay, on our next section, we're gonna talk a bit about images. So which audience would you say this slide would be more appropriate for? First through eighth grade, confirmation, parents, catechist, or none? So you can throw your thoughts in the chat. A, first through eighth grade, first through eighth. Yep, so that's, that's the consensus. So Kenneth has his data there for this one. I think this one's pretty straightforward, you know. And this is a perfect one for these virtual times when you're, you know, doing virtual classes with kids. Click to enter to join your, click to join to enter your class. So this one's clearly for kids. Great. Okay, on our next slide, we'll talk about using images. So five different things to remembers, um, remember when using images and animations would be, um, of course, they enhance your topic. You know, that's just a natural thing. Janet spoke to that a little bit, you know, just um, a way to draw attention to one aspect of your topic. Um, and instead of the wordy text that we saw in some of those slides, an image can say a lot. So, you know, it's important to use them for that, that, you know, you can just use that one image and it can say a lot. Even in Hector's example of, you know, with the different gifts and the animations that were happening there, it was saying a lot without using many words. So they're very helpful. However, you just wanna make sure, you know, that you're mindful of the quality, the quantity and the size of images that you're using and animations as well. So if there's, you know, too much going on again, it's going to look like a cluttered, busy slide. But if you're mindful of the quantity, um, you know, then it's very useful. Also with size, um, you know, maybe to have consistency within what you're presenting as far as images, instead of having, you know, some small, some big, you know, all over the place, maybe having them the same size um, and, you know, just being cautious on that as well. And again, the designer, the design idea tab will help you with that as well. Um, a fourth thing would be circles. With circles, they're great. Um, thing to add into your presentations because they, they make the information more emotionally accessible to your audience. So they really kind of soften your presentation. And so to use circles and maybe even to you know, put your images within a circle, um, it, can, it can soften your presentation overall and be more appealing to people. Um, with animations, Kenneth, might speak a little bit to that now regarding animations on Zoom. I mean, I'm sorry, on PowerPoint. We had, um, you know, Hector's example with Keynote. Yeah, so um, animations is something uh, very simple to use. Um, and actually, most of the animations that you uh, can use, you can also find it um, on the Google. So I just typed in Google, candle give animation because I want to do a prayer. And when I go there, um, it's gonna take me, if I go to images, of course, um, I just gonna just select any of the images and I'm just gonna select this one, for instance, and you see it's showing right now uh, the animation. And you just need to copy the image 
take it to your PowerPoint. I'm just gonna put it here in this slide. And I'm just gonna add um, a new slide. And I'm just gonna put it here. We're still on Google, Kenneth. Oh, you're still on Google, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, technology. Where is my other presentation? I think it's here. Can you see now my slide? Okay, so I just, now let me go back. I just um, I've added a new slide and I I use uh, the, the, the shortcuts, Control B as in Victor, and I see the animations and then you see, oh, it's not moving. You just need to put it in the full presentation and you will see it's moving right there. So it's, it's extremely simple uh, to use um, this type of, um, animations you know and as, as Hector was presenting there a lot of animations you can put a person walking it depends on what you are using in your um what words you're using in your search and you will find it and sometimes um then you need to test it that's something that i always recommend test it before you uh, go live in your presentation with animations because sometimes it doesn't work and you're expecting movement and it's not creating the the uh, the reaction that you want to create in, in, in the audience, you know? Um, so you need to always uh, test your presentation before. I will also send it to another person to see if that will work with them. And to piggyback on what Kenneth you're saying, just while you're there, uh, uh, let's say a lot, the copy and pasting works, works a lot, but sometimes you might panic when it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So the other way you also might do is you choose your picture in Google, and then drag it to your presentation. So then it, it would be the other way that if for some reason, when you do that, doesn't work, dragging that picture to your presentation, you know, will, be, will, be, will bring the motion, okay? Just in case you panic when mm -hmm. you do that. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And, no, and two things I would maybe note when you saw when Victor first, I mean, I'm sorry, when Kenneth first put that GIF in there, the design ideas tab popped up and populated some different ways that you could just format the slide automatically. Yes, so that's that, correct. that popped up automatically. Um, and then also, Kenneth, a question that maybe you or Hector would be able to answer um, in the chat. Are, are there any problems with permissions for using GIFs that we find on Google? That's, that's a good question. I always go, when I do that, I always go for public domain GIF animations. I always put the word uh, right now for the for the purpose of this presentation, this training. I didn't put the word, but I always go to public domain. Or if I'm using the GIF and I know it's copyrighted, I just give the credit. Um, I think that one of the issues that we have with uh, copyrights is when we we don't give the the, the proper um, rights to the person, or sometimes it's licensed. And usually, when it's licensed and you need to pay a fee, it will have a watermark showing that you need to go to that website and purchase it. If it doesn't have, that's that's what I've been uh, searching um, and, and kind of uh, learning more, is that sometimes you can use with permissions. Um, and other, you know, the other way would be just to, when you get the letter from the, the person's lawyer and saying that you're using, <laughs> but I'm kidding. No, it, that's, it, it is something that you need to uh, be aware of and you need to be mindful. And also, because as, as Catholics, we need to be, uh, respectful of other people's uh, property and, and job. So we always at least give credit if we don't know, or at least we, we can put a website that uh, we retrieve that image and say, okay, this is not mine. At least we're saying this is not mine. Yeah, just to add then, in some cases, uh, some parishes maybe have the ability to purchase a package of gift, mm -hmm. you know, but in most cases, what I, Kenneth, you answered most of the question, but in, in some cases, what I would do also I would search uh, free gifts, you know, uh, free gifts, and that would also put me in a safe spot. One more thing, uh, maybe you have a blank, you, you have a blank background, but you want to uh, put that little candle moving in, in a candle that you have. Maybe you have already a Pascal candle, uh, sorry, I'm sorry uh, an Advent candle there, and you want to put only, you know, the what is the little little tongue of fire there. Uh, you can search also transparent gift, you know, of uh, of Kyle, and then you will you will find that, you know. Uh, so, and then you can put in your in your advent candle, uh, just to bring movement, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, as you can as you can see, there are different ways that you can get a lot of uh, resources. It's just the way you search. You know, what words you use for search and what what you really want to look for and actually want to look for free. Um, and that there we go. This is all the, the documents. Of, there's a lot of people that put in a lot of clip art that are free. Uh, they just they just create it and, and share, um, which is, is great. So it's something that, you know, keep in mind, um, as Sector was saying, um, you will have. And some of them, when you see the, the, the um, kind of um, squared or with this background, it, it means that it will show in your presentation. It will be like uh, transparent. It will, it will show the background of your slide and you will see only the, the silhouette of the image. Um, that's also something that you will uh, be able to see. Some of them are called GIF, but they are um, in reality, they are just um, images and they don't have any movement. So also you need to try, you need to you know, continue seeing and good thing about Google is it show you if it has movement or not, and then you can, if, if it may not work or work, you can just test it, put it in your slide and see if the movement is present or not. You know, it, it is something that you will find tons of, of uh, resources on Google on, uh, on the internet. You just need to continue testing and see which one you, you find uh, most appropriate. Okay, now okay, let's go. Now Jackie was gonna share a little information more on image resources and this, slide has links on it and we will be sharing the slides with you so then you'll be able to access those. Okay, okay. Jackie? thank you very much. Uh, so following up on uh, talking about copyrights and, and licenses, um, what we'd recommend is um, to go uh, to public domain um, images or um, GIFs or um, videos. Uh, and I do use three, three of those that I wanna share with you. One of them is the, uh, www.catholic.com. It has um, images. I think it's associated with Pixabay because you can find those images in both um, uh, both sites. So it's actually people who you know take uh, really nice pictures. They have really good cameras, and they um, share for free in this in these pages. They create an account for them and they upload what um, images they want to you know to donate. Let's say donate. Um, they do ask if you want to donate something. Uh, they ask, when I download from Pixabay, it asks if you want to donate a coffee, a cup of coffee to the, to, the, um, um, to the photographer. And it's nice, you know, it's nice to, you know, to give some, some type of incentive to, to um, the people who takes those nice pictures. Catholic, it's all about Catholic pictures. They have um, beautiful, beautiful uh, images. Um, and I really, really recommend that um, to go to Catholic and, and, and work with them. Uh, Pixabay, they do have a lot of a lot more. They do have um, not only uh, pictures, they have also vector graphics, illustrator. They also have like clips, uh, video clips that you can, if you want or if you um, if you want to edit a, your own video, you can use uh, clips from from uh, from Pixabay too as well. Um, or, as they mentioned, you can you can also um, go to uh, a stock uh, agency. Um, Livestock is the one that that I use uh, here in um, sort of uh, doing certification uh, with videos. Livestock is also a Christian um, uh, company. And they have beautiful uh, images as well. Not too pricey, as I think. Um, and they also have really nice clips as well. Uh, the other one is Unplash, um, unplash.com. They also have uh, free images uh, to to download. And what we recommend is, the, you know, um, we usually go to Google, you know, if we want to find a cross or something. And yeah, we don't know. Usually Google has in the bottom of that image, it says that, yeah, you know, the image, uh, it might have copyrights, but Google is not going to help you find that information. We, you have to look for, for, uh, for copyrights or, um, by your own, it, um, they don't help, they don't help us to, to do that. And we recommend to use good quality uh, images. Um, 
I recommend 1080 by 1920 or anything, anything more than than a thousand will be will be good. Because if you get um, a really a small image with you know with small resolution, when you put it in a PowerPoint and you try to make it bigger, it will be very pixelated. So yeah, we recommend to look for for um, a, a better resolution. And those those pages that I uh, mentioned it, they they have really good resolutions. Okay, now let me go back to the presentation. I was just uh, showing some of the um, pages that Jackie was mentioning. Um, thank you, Jackie. Um, I wanted to mention, you can create an ac uh, your account there. It, um, for example, Pixabay, when you try to download, they ask you what type of, um, like what quality do you want? And they have like three or four um, sizes of the image. So. Yeah, we recommend something bigger than a thousand. Don't go over three thousand because it's going to be really big and it might take a lot of space. Um, uh, you know, in the PowerPoint. Great. So now we're going to turn to our catechetical leaders again, um, while they show us some of their examples of how they've used images. Um, and we're going to start with Karen again. All right. So again, this uh, slide comes from. Um, the parent orientation I did to kick off my school year. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, sacraments uh, with the parents without um, having too much information again on, on the slide. Um, so I just basically wanted a very clean look. I found these uh, free images and popped them into my uh, slide. And then again, use the design function to create this. So the designer gave me lots of ideas and throughout my presentation, I just wanted to keep the look as clean as and uncluttered as possible. Uh, and so this is what I came up with to be able to have that conversation with parents using images that they would know, you know, exactly what we're talking about without having to break it out in so many words on the screen for them. Uh, Janet. And then this is a slide also that um, uses an image. So again, it's an image of our church. As many of us know, um, not all of our families attend mass regularly. Um, so I think using, when I can, I try to use images of the actual interior of the church. And if I can get one of our pastors in that so they can visually get to know the space that they're gonna be bringing their families into. So this was again the presentation from um, all of the steps and what to expect at mass. So not a lot of text, more visual, and then audio added in. And then the next slide. This was from a um, presentation that we did for our second grade parents uh, to help them prepare their children for reconciliation at home. And these are, were parts of the handouts that we gave them. So as I explained all of the pieces that they had picked up when they entered, I also wanted the visual. So they, as I talked about each one, I could say, this is what the book looks like, or this is what the sheet looks like that has the prayer of sorrow that you cut in half. Uh, and when you ask for forgiveness, um, you come with a heart, a sorrowful heart, and then the parent gives them a smiley face for let them know that they are forgiven. And these are activities that they could do at home to help prepare their children, a, a visual examination of conscience. And then the praying the daily examine was for the parents, for them to understand how to pray the examine, and then they can share it if they started as um, some, a tool that they use in prayer life they can then share it with their families at dinner or at night when you're saying prayers. So I use the actual pictures of the actual items. Um, some of those I found online, some of them I had from the publishers, some of them I just actually took a picture, a digital picture and uploaded it.
Okay, Kenneth and Jackie, we're gonna speak to videos and music real quick. Yes, uh, so I'll, I'll start. Uh, so when you are using, um, so the, 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 the topic of this uh, training was not only to talk about PowerPoint. I think this, it goes around a lot of PowerPoint, but I think this, this is not, this is, this is the time for us to say, PowerPoint is not the only tool that you need to use in your presentation. Remember what David said at the beginning, you are telling a story. You are, you are engaging particip participants in this, um, in, in the presentation. So it is something that you need to use as many resources as, as you can. And don't be afraid of switching, you know, like as we're doing in the train right now, switching to one person to another or to switching pages or, or uh, windows, that's fine. Only you need to be prepared, have all your windows open as I wanna share in, in, in one of the tips is number one, quantity. How many videos you want to use, how many images, or how, how much music you want to use in your, in your presentation. Quantity is, you need, you will learn that by the reaction of your participants. If you're putting too many um, videos or you're putting too many uh, songs or you need to calibrate if it's needed or not or how you can have a balance in, in the amount of images, color, circles, you know, text, designs, and if music and video needs to be part of it. Um, sometimes when you do uh, videos, it is my suggestion, um, if you have um, uh, an account or you have videos that you already downloaded, please keep it in your computer so you don't depend on internet, because sometimes the, the, the most critical point when you share videos and music, if you are, do, you are streaming from the internet, if you have bad connection or your connection is, is, is a little poor, then you will have an issue that you know the video kind of freezes, the music, you know, gets interrupted or you know, it's it's, it's breaking up. So and that you know defeats a little bit the purpose of your of your presentations. You want to have you know relaxing music that you will put um, like um, I don't know if you will hear right now that I'm putting some background music. You know, I'm talking and trying to to make this a more reflective moment. That's fine, but I already have my my window video player already um, in my computer. Maybe you don't see it, but you know that was my moment to share because I'm saying something that really requires music to have, you know, people uh, setting up in a different mood. Um, when you also want to do videos, that's totally fine. If you are still now, we're gonna share a small video, a short video, um, and you just switch your screens, and you can have your video now. I, I had the luck to, to, to know uh, people that is uh, text heavy and I didn't know because we're, you were using Chrome and some one of the issues that we, we come sometimes when we do presentations uh, using YouTube videos is the, the ads, all the things that you, you know, distractions or sometimes inappropriate ads that you will find, I don't know why associated with the YouTube videos. So I downloaded um, extension, so Chrome has some extensions that you can download um, and you can put in your computer. And one of them is, I don't know if you can see, uBlock Origin. That is, this This is an extension for Google Chrome that prevents you from having ads in your videos and even in your music. And I see that right now it has more than 106 ads associated with this video and it's not gonna be showing at all. And one thing that you need to be aware of when you are do doing in Zoom presentations, you're using uh, videos, is make sure that when you are sharing your screen, you're also sharing the audio of your device, of your computer. Otherwise you will say, okay, guys, can you hear the music? And it's all now, that's a distraction. You know, little by little, you will be able to, to, to master all these tools. But the, the real thing is you need to practice, you need to keep working, you need to keep investigating how this really works and you know make it your own. Uh, some people say, no, I don't like videos. I say, well, maybe this short video and also something that um, has to do with this um, point in the presentation about videos, don't make the videos too lengthy. Uh, don't, don't make a class Well, the video, um, it takes more than five or seven minutes. Uh, I would say seven would be the most. Um, I'm seeing some research that they use two or three minute video. 
this is a like four minute video uh, with an animation that is showing um, something about, you know, um, Advent, if you want to share that. So there are different things that you can use with that. And, and you are not breaking any rule here in license because you are just sharing live streaming in the presentation. But it's not something that you're making. I made this video. You're showing that it's being presented from uh, from internet, from YouTube. So you are kind of um, making that uh, clear. So you're respecting the boundaries, and you are not downloading unless you have uh, an account that allows you to download, uh, because you are paying in a way for those royalties. Um, and with that. I'm sorry, while you're on that page, can you repeat the Chrome extension? There was a question in the chat for that. Okay. The extension is, I'm just gonna show the extensions that I have. I don't know if you can see them. Is U block origin. So when when you go, um, when you want to add extensions, uh, let me just open a new um, page. I go to Chrome, Chrome extensions, and it will take me to Chrome Web Store. And here I can look for um, ad blockers, and you will see different um, blockers that you can find. Um, and I just went to the ones with the uh, best um, rate. And I think I used the one that is free. And I think I made the, I'm sorry, I, I think I made the search with U blocker because I think that was the, the, the word that my, my friend gave me. Um, U blocker. I don't know why he's not showing more. And for some reason, he's not showing right now in the presentation. It's you block, not you block. Oh, you. And that's right here. And you will have, um, actually, thank you for remembering. When I think my friends me to, to search the U block, and you will have a lot of uh, U blocks, um, you know, uh, and for some reason. And those are those work fine, but my friend said that this is the best one. Um, and actually, the reviews were really good about this one. Um, and you just don't see um, the ads. And what you do is actually have it here, but it will say um, add to your Chrome. You click here and, and automatically it's being shown here in, your, in the extensions. Um, another um, thing that you can do with videos uh, now that we're here is um, Chrome, um, um, the extension that is a Screencastify that is free and you can use your Google account and you will be recording everything that you're doing in your screen. So you can create videos on how to um, do a, like a training or you want them to do something, uh, they will show, uh, but maybe we can just take, talk about that in another presentation, just to go over some other tech uh, things that you can do. So I think this is just for you to see that there's a lot of things that you can find and you can use to make your presentation, not your PowerPoint presentation, your overall presentation really uh, effective and, and, and to the point. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, okay, I think I cover most of them. So, uh, and again, if you if you are able to download videos and music, please do it. If not, make sure that you have it ready in your toolbar, in your taskbar, in your computer, and you transition the best way you you can. Um, again, my philosophy when I do presentations, I wanted to make it clear. I don't want it to make it perfect. Um, if there's something that transitions require me to, for people to see that I'm twitching um, windows in the in the computer, I think that's fine. I don't think that helps to to become a, a, a distraction. It's just something that you 
you have to do, you know, and, and I think that's completely understandable. Um, and now let's go to the resources. Mm -hmm. Jackie. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if you want, um, if you like to edit videos, um, to create your, or, or exp begin exploring about editing your own videos, as I mentioned, you can find clips, um, on a Pixabay or, um, any uh, other, um, public domain sites. And what I recommend it's, um, or what, what I've been using, it's, um, www.animoto.com. If you, if you can, uh, open a, that site, can it? Hmm. Animoto.com, it has, um, uh, free templates, you can create your account and um, they have a, a um, free templates to use. You can create your, your own um, videos. Uh, we use it to create like, like uh, prayers uh, for our courses, for our online courses. And um, they have images as well. They have a, a, they have a few clips. Of course, if you want to upgrade, they they, they do uh, charge uh, monthly fee or, or um, annually. They have also music. Um, I was trying to do it at, uh, as free, but they don't have a lot of music that you can um, download to the video, unless of course you upgrade. Or uh, for public domain music, Pixabay now has uh, free music to, uh, to download. And um, let me check. Yeah, open it. No, if you, do you have Pixabay open? Mm, let me see. Mm, let me just go back to Pixabay. Please, thank you. Uh, on the menu bar, uh, go up, it has, after videos, it has music right there. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and, you know, search what kind of music you, you want, like a calm, um, depending on, on the gender, uh, what mood do you want. You can go ahead and download it and just create um, on your desktop or on your, um, on your library, you know, some type of music, and then you can upload it to your to your PowerPoint. And it's free, uh, you don't have to you don't have to put like credits or anything like that, you, ha you can just download it for free. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do we have here? If you purchase purchased your music, you know, from a singer, uh, and you have it on your computer, you can also upload it to the PowerPoint, just uh, make sure to, you know, to add uh, credits, who's a singer, the composer, um, just in case. Mm. Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, so you see, it's, it's, it's a presentation, um, how to stop it. So in, in your presentations, you even don't need to um, necessarily include it in your PowerPoint. Sometimes it's, it's, it's helpful. Or sometimes yes, you have you, this page open and you just, you know, uh, share the music when when you um, need to do it. So I think that's something that, um, again, practice will help you to master this and, you know, start um, searching in these pages for something that you want to download, to use. Please, I think this is, this is a good excuse to practice and uh, start developing those skills. I think this is wonderful. Yeah, just, just explore. Um, apps on the phone as well. You can you can download apps to um, edit videos or and your computer and your devices uh, find free free things that they have if you want to go ahead and make more uh, sophisticated or you know more try to purchase something some some type of plan some some of those sources have like free trials for seven days for a month and stuff so. You might like it, and it's it's nice to create your own your own you know videos and things. 
Okay, um, real quick, I don't know if Karen or Janet, you'd have any tips that you use. If you use video or music, you can just throw those in real quick. Otherwise, we can even save your comments for Q&A. It's not something that everybody has expertise on. Okay, so um, great. Okay, so we'll go on to reusing slides. Mm -hmm. Kenneth is gonna show you that super quick. Yes, so let me just share my screen. Um, where is it? This presentation. So one thing that I, I learned in, in one training here in the Arch was that I like a presentation and I don't know where I, where I put it, but I know it's in my computer. So my PowerPoint is helping me to find um, the slides that I use in different presentations with this, um, um, with this uh, icon. It says reuse the slide. And what this is going to be doing, Microsoft right now, is going to be searching in all my folders where I have PowerPoint. And it will take me to all the presentations that I did in the past. And if I want to reuse something from these presentations, I click in this PowerPoint from the past. And it will take me to what I did previously. So when I, I, th I say I like um, this image, and this is slide, I don't need to do anything, just to click and it will be here. And I can just reuse the slide. So that way you are keeping consistency. You don't need to use uh, or search for more images. If you want to do that, you know, I think this, this tool is extremely helpful. Great, okay, and then, um... I'll talk really quickly about moving through our presentations. Um, as you've seen, Kenneth has moved through this presentation wonderfully, you know, and, and we've been going back and forth between things, um, you know, between open windows and the presentation and other people sharing screens. So, you know, you've kind of seen a really good example of moving through the presentation. So just a few things to, to comment on here. Within PowerPoint, there is a notes feature that comes up at the bottom of your slides. So if you, when you're doing your presentation, you can write your notes there that you want to share with people and they don't come up as you see when you're in slideshow mode. So those would be private, you know, and then they wouldn't be shared as you're sharing your screen. Um, Kenneth has showed, you know, funny examples of sharing screen and the sound. There was a question in the chat about, um, if we can show you how to share the sound when you share your screen, we cannot show that. For some reason, the show your screen window doesn't share. But just so you know, if you clicked on share your screen, it'll pull up your open windows that you could share. And on the very bottom of that, there is an indication to share your sound and share your video or something like that. So the, the options are right there. Um, but you could always you know, contact one of us and we can walk you through it if you need help with that. Um, the main thing with any presentation is practice, practice, practice. You know, and as you've seen, like as, you, as you're working through these things, the more you practice, it just becomes second nature. Um, Kenneth also mentioned opening windows and documents. Um, you know, having those open if you're not going to embed those things in your presentation, just to have those available and, and just switch back and forth between them. That's perfectly fine. Um, Kenneth, on this last point, showing Zoom slides as background, why don't we save that for the Q&A so that if people want to stay longer, because we're kind of running a little long, but we can show you this cool new feature at the end if you're interested in staying. On our next slide, um, we're not gonna go through this. It just has some tips for you on shortcuts to move through your presentation. So you can see that and mess around with that after our presentation today. And then this last one, um, sharing your presentations. So, you know, Janet had mentioned she's put presentations on her website, you know, and Karen has mentioned that she's, um, you know, done them in a, like we're doing right now in a presentation with parents. And Hector, I believe you're, the confirmation one was sent out ahead of time. You know, So there's different ways to share your presentation. So you can send your presentation as is if you want people to be able to use it as a reference you know, or if you wanna share it with your catechists or volunteers and you want them to be able to edit it accordingly, you, know, you can just send your PowerPoint presentation to them. It's helpful to 
share your presentations as a show, you know, for example, if you're going to put them on a website and you want people just to click on it and be able to see the show without having to, um, you know, slide through anything and, you know, um, so that's a very easy way to share. Another one would be to save as your PDF. So um, if I can screen share real quick, I can just show you where those things are. Um, let's see, I will go to this one right here. Um, uh, let, let me go to this one, sorry. Oh, I'm gonna stop because I did not screen share my sound. So I wanted to make sure I do that on this one presentation. Okay, so on this presentation here, if I wanted to save this different ways, I would just go to file, save a copy, and then you'll see here in this drop down tab, you have a PDF right there. So you can save it as a PDF and it's just gonna look like your typical PDF that you scroll through. So that's great to share with um, families as well. And then the PPSX show is, is an actual show. So when they open up, it's just gonna start automatically. So that's where you change those. Um, to let you see, when this one is shared as a show, I'm just gonna do it real quick. It has music in it. And you are hopefully hearing the music. Yes, okay, because I shared the sound. So, so that shows you how that then, that would come to, parent, to people just like that with the music starting automatically because it's shared as a show. All right. So those are just, that was super quick on the sharing presentations. I don't know if Hector, Janet, or Karen, if any of you have just, you know, tips or comments on when and how you find it's easiest to share PowerPoint presentations. Maybe if each of you, if you have something to say, you can just hop in. I, I would just like to share um, when we started with the pandemic and we had realized we had to be able to share stuff, it was, I would create something and it was too big of a file to email. So we posted on our parish website and then I send a link to it, much like you do with stuff on Izzy and then you share the link. Because you can't, in most cases, can't just email the PowerPoint show or the PowerPoint to families because of the size. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks for that, Tim. I uh, just uh, piggybacking on what uh, Janet said uh, for for keynote. You know, uh, again, it all depends on the way it has uh, the document, and uh, the presentation I share with you is a heavy one because it has uh, gifts and has kind of uh, the gifts are like a little video. So when you put all them together, you know, it becomes heavy. So certainly. Uh, the, I mean, the best way I've been doing was to convert it to a PDF and send it to them. Uh, the only difference is they don't see the movements that maybe that they see in live presentation. And, and that is kind of sometimes the disadvantage, you know. Uh, you can make a little video of that and then post, yes. Uh, and sometimes I am reluctant to send my, my PowerPoint just as it is, because changes can happen all, all along the way that I didn't do. So because I want to save also, uh, that's kind of my practice because I work on that. I want to maintain it as my own work because I am responsible for it. You know? But if I send a PowerPoint like to anybody that they can have um, access and maneuver it, then uh, it, it, is, it wasn't mine. You know? So also those are some tips that uh, to um, kind of pay attention. With families, you know, I either make it a little movie and then send it to them or just a PDF, you know, uh, for uh, for those who missed the session and so. Great, thanks, Kenneth. Karen, did you have any comments? No, I, I agree uh, with what Kenneth said uh, and Janet. For me, uh, it was really helpful to walk parents through my slides during uh, an actual orientation, have it saved as a PDF and then upload it to the parish website uh, because we had several families who registered after our orientation had been concluded. So it was just a really helpful reference tool for them. I think there's a question. Uh, uh, I don't know why it is Kenneth, this is Hector. Uh, yes, my... right. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I think I called you Kenneth too, so we apologize. <laughs> yes, that's all right. Yes, if you want to address that question, please. We are Peruvian, so yeah, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> so there's a question. Uh, I think it says, if you send by, uh, by PDF, does it contain the automation? No. No, when you convert a PDF, uh, the, the gift becomes again a frozen image because it's, it's, on, it's a PDF, you know. So the, uh, that's, I, that's why I said you lose that when you make a PDF. The, 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 light, the delightful thing of this is when it is live, then they can see everything that you have there. So, very good. Thanks, Hector. Um, okay, and then this. I also wanted to add one Please. thing that you had mentioned about the notes section um, mm -hmm. that I use that. Uh, so, when you're doing presentations, you can actually print choose to print out the note section. So it has the slide on the top and all of your notes. So when you're recording it or when you're presenting it in person, you have this what you're supposed to say on each of those slides. So it's a good tool to use and everything's in one document. Great, thank you. Um, this page just has some, you know, basic resources for you to click on, um, you know, if you want to um, learn more of the basic features of PowerPoint, Google, and Keynote. Um, so we'll hop into questions. I'm going to start with the with one that came up very early um, in the chat that I'm going to throw to Kenneth. Um, so the question is, when we need to use the Arch logo in presentations, is there a design style or color scheme you recommend? So um, um, excellent question. So let me share pretty quick uh, website that you need to have. I think that's something that is extremely helpful to have, which is the Arch um, um, email. Actually, let me just go here because I think it's easier to find it from here. Then, and that's easy. Easy is um, a website that belongs to the Arch that you all have access because you all have Arch emails. And here at Easy, you have topics and one of the topics is resources. And you will have here some, um, uh, let me see where it is. Um, there, is there is a template that the Arch um, makes available and that's, that's something that we, we, we can use. Um, let me see, I wasn't prepared for that. But I think it's here. Um, I think it's templates. And I think this is a template from the Arch that you can just open. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to download it because I'm sharing the screen. Sometimes it's not letting me do that. Um, but I, I think if even if you contact communication from the Arch and said, I want to use the Arch logo in my presentations, they will send you the right um, size and font. And, you know, because the, there is a branding behind Kenneth, all the documents that are coming from the Arch. Kenneth, uh, the yes, Jackie. It, it says send, send by email. So I think they have to request that. By oh, email. it's by email. OK. Right uh, on the, on the oh, left, yes. on the top right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. You need to request it and you will use it. Um, you will not going to be able to use it. Thank you, Jackie. I forgot about the point. Great, thanks. Yeah, and as you can see through our presentation today, we had a very standard red and white archdiocese design. You know, in your presentations, you you have the freedom to be more creative in them, you know, um, but absolutely, if you do want to use the arch logo in that, please feel free to, to do we that. We also had an earlier question uh, for Hector about Keynote. Um, so when you save a Keynote, is it able to be viewed on any device, whether parents have like a Mac or not? Um, so like PowerPoint, uh, when you open a PowerPoint in any um, iOS device, you know, it will, it will appear as it, it has been created. But if, if I open a PowerPoint in a Mac, uh, I will be able to uh, open it, but the format might change, but sometimes even the font might change. Likewise, uh, with Keynote, uh, when you share it kind of as it is, uh, people will still be able to open, but 
when they do, if they open in a, a iOS or in, in a Windows and so, uh, the format might change. Even, uh, you know, the way it was arranged, uh, the wordings and the picture, maybe can become a bigger and uh, the font might not exist in there. So those are kind of the, a bit the disadvantages. No? Um, but uh, people who have iOS, they will open as it is. No? Thanks, Hector. Uh, do we have any other questions? I think we've gotten through the ones in the chat, but if anyone has any, they can just speak out too. Something that maybe I want, I want to share is, or maybe ask if, if you find this, this presentation useful, and there are points that, of course, there's there was a, a lot of points that we covered in these presentations, but it's something in particular that you want us to develop or you want us to offer uh, more in-depth uh, training, please let us know that you can put also in the chat suggestions for topics that you want us to continue creating for you and providing more trainings. And all these trainings are going to all recorded, so it's going to be edited um, um, later on and then share as a link. Uh, for all of you to to go back to see it, and this this is this presentation becomes a tool for you, so you can go back at any time and and find ways to um, uh, refresh and practice some of the things that were presented here. But also, if other topics that we are missing, other topics that we want uh, that you want us to create or bring um, uh, more experts, or, or even some of you said like I have a good uh, something to want to share in a presentation, so please let us know, and we. You know, again, we um, this in this is one of the first times that we are inviting catechetical leaders to be part of the, the the presentation because we want that all this information is coming from your reality, It's coming from from what you are doing and what what you are um, looking to work every single day. So I think this is um, a good starting point for us to communicate with you and also to hear and 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 have more topics for the coming future. Great. And just to follow up on that, I did put the PowerPoint slides in the chat. We will also email them. Um, and following up with what Kenneth said, as far as getting your feedback, we'll send a survey as well, where you can give us feedback on today's presentation, but then also, you know, things that you would like to see in the future. So we'll send that um, hopefully later today, if not tomorrow. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, well, we'd really like to thank Jana Cachetta, Karen Shiflett, and Hector Obregon for joining us today and sharing their tips. We really appreciate their insight um, and, and the resources and ideas they shared. So, Thank you. Okay. And let's end uh, how we started in prayer. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, you left your mother in our midst that she might accompany us. May she take care of us and protect us on our journey, in our hearts, in our faith. May she make us disciples like herself, missionaries like herself. May she teach us to step outside ourselves and pursue a life of missionary discipleship in all that we do. May she, by her meekness, by her peace, show us the way. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everybody.